Hello students, welcome back. Today we're going to continue with anemia, specifically anemia associated with inadequate erythropoiesis. We've already discussed anemia in general, and in this lecture we'll focus on inadequate erythropoiesis anemia. There are several components that we'll need to discuss this type of anemia. Let's illustrate those here. Let's first describe the normal situation. Let's start with the digestive system. There are several components that we'll need to ingest that the myeloid tissue needs to produce our red blood cells. Shown here are vitamin B12, folate, and iron. We also need amino acids, but we're not going to discuss those here. So let's start with the ingestion of these three components. Shown here is the intake of vitamin B12, folate, and iron. Once in the stomach, the folate travels to the first and second parts of the small intestines and is absorbed into the bloodstream. Let's illustrate that one here. The iron travels to the first part of the small intestines and is absorbed into circulation. The situation with vitamin B12 requires a little more explanation. Vitamin B12 requires a glycoprotein to allow its absorption into circulation. That protein is shown here. The vitamin B12 must bind with this protein. This vitamin B12 protein complex travels to the third part of the small intestines. Now we have these three required components in circulation, iron, folate, and vitamin B12. These three components then travel through circulation and enter the bone marrow. After traveling through circulation, these three components enter the bone marrow. Once in the bone marrow, these components are involved in erythropoiesis. One additional item needed for erythropoiesis is erythropoietin, EPO. It is produced by the liver and the kidneys. Once produced, the EPO enters circulation and moves to the bone marrow. Once in circulation, the EPO also enters the bone marrow. EPO is now in the bone marrow. And so within the myeloid tissue, we have all the required components. EPO, folate, iron, and vitamin B12. These components, along with the myeloid tissue, undergo the process of erythropoiesis to produce our red blood cells. And shown here is our newly formed red blood cell. Diagram here is our entire normal process. The process of erythropoiesis with vitamin B12, folate, iron, and EPO. Let's annotate a few items here. First, let's talk about the protein here that binds to the vitamin B12. This protein is produced by a cell of the stomach. There's a stomach cell here which produces this protein. Let's identify this cell. So this is the stomach cell which produces the vitamin B12 binding protein. And shown here is the vitamin B12 binding protein. This stomach cell produces the vitamin B12 binding protein. This vitamin B12 binding protein, as the name implies, binds to vitamin B12 and allows vitamin B12 to be absorbed into circulation. Let's first name the stomach cell. This stomach cell is called a parietal cell. And the vitamin B12 binding protein is called intrinsic factor. It is a glycoprotein. Here we have the parietal cell, and here we have intrinsic factor. Vitamin B12 binds to intrinsic factor to produce the vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. These components then enter the small intestines. The vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex are absorbed across the last part or the third part of the small intestine. There are three parts of the small intestines. The first part is the duodenum, sometimes pronounced duodenum. The second part is the jejunum, and the third part is the ileum. Let's summarize what we have so far. When we eat food, we intake vitamin B12, folate, and iron. These enter our stomach. The folate travels to the first or second part of the small intestine, the duodenum or the jejunum, and is absorbed into circulation. The iron travels to the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, and is absorbed into circulation. The vitamin B12 enters the stomach, binds to intrinsic factor, which is produced by the parietal cells of the stomach. This complex travels to the third part of the small intestine, the ileum, and is absorbed into circulation. These three components then travel through circulation, enter the myeloid tissue. The liver and the kidneys produce erythropoietin. The erythropoietin enters circulation and also travels into the myeloid tissue. These components, along with the myeloid tissue, undergo the process of erythropoiesis to produce our red blood cells. That's not to make this lecture too long. We're going to stop here. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about pathologies associated with these mechanisms. And so that concludes this lecture. I hope that you've learned a lot.